Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Logical Redstone. Today we're going to just be talking about displays, one of my favorite topics. We're going to talk about two different types of displays, one being a pixel display where you're turning pixels on and off in a grid, and another type being a seven segment display where you have seven segments mainly used to display numbers. So first let's talk about pixel displays. In this tutorial I'm only going to be showing off pixel displays where the pixel size is two by two blocks. So if you have a grid of say six by six blocks that means it's actually a pixel size of three by three pixels. Now there's two different types of ways you can do these displays. You can do them with pistons where the pistons pop out the blocks and show your pixels that are on or you can do them with lamps where you just simply turn on the pixels that you want. For an individual piston pixel, I like this design the most. So you just have a single torch, which turns off and then turns on these two torches, which each have their own repeaters and are connected to two pistons. Well, they're technically only powering the top two, but quasi-connectivity allows you to activate all four at once. So you turn on the lamp and the entire pixel is displayed. Of course, this design is stackable, which means we can stack it side to side and up and down. So here is a three by three grid of them. And as you can see, you can just activate any individual pixel you want. But honestly, I don't ever recommend using this type of piston display because uh, pistons can drop their blocks. In Java Edition, if a piston receives a one take pulse, they will drop their block. And that doesn't seem like a huge problem, but for a display, it's, it's totally problematic because we only want two different states. We want a state of on where the pistons are extended, and we want a state of off where they're pulled back. If you send in a quick one tick pulse, now we have a mismatch. This guy is supposed to be off because the lamp is off, and yet, we have a pixel on the screen because the pistons have dropped their blocks. So I hate dealing with that. It's a really nasty property for piston displays. Just don't use pistons. So here's a two by two lamp pixel, which is what I do recommend. The back of it looks exactly the same as the piston one, uh, but then it goes into two torches with blocks above them. So the bottom two torches here cover uh, these two parts of the pixel, and then the blocks that they're powering above them cover the top two parts of the pixel. So as you can see, when we press this lamp, we get the pixel to turn on. Of course, it's also stackable, just like the piston one. If we turn on any individual lamps, we can see that we're turning on those representative pixels on the screen. So this system is great if all you want is a player to be able to individually control uh, each pixel and then they can draw whatever they want. But a lot of times if you're making bigger machines, like a word processor, for example, the player is not activating the pixels individually. The player is doing like a keyboard or something, right? And then the machine is in charge of turning on and off pixels. So really we want a better system so that we can use memory to our advantage inside of the display. So consider this circuit from the RAM video where you basically have a torch into a torch. The official name for this is an RS NOR latch, which is a real thing in electronics. But basically what it lets us do, if you didn't see from last time, is you can switch it to this side using the button and then that will basically turn it into the on state. So if this was a pixel, when we press this button, it writes to the pixel. And then if we want to clear it, we set it back to the default state, and now we've cleared the pixel. So let's just take this, compact it down, and implement it into every single pixel on the screen. And it ends up looking something like this. So this purple part is the exact same thing as this part, it's just compacted down. We have a torch into a torch with two repeaters to make sure it's stackable when we stack it side to side. And then you can power this side, which basically writes to the latch, and now this torch takes the signal all the way out into the pixel. So now we have written this pixel. If we want to clear it, well, we do the exact same thing that we did over here. I have this red circuit here, which is a repeater into this block and then a little bit of a slab tower. You'll see why we're doing it as a slab tower later, but basically you press this button and it clears it. But I do want to add one more feature because similar to the RAM video when I was adding the right thing, if you make a mistake here and then, oh shoot, well now I have to press clear and that's just kind of annoying, especially if your clear is set up to clear the entire board of pixels. So I want to have a write function that basically lets us decide what we want to input first and then have a write button to actually write it to the pixel. And so that's what we're doing right over here. It's literally the exact same thing, except I put this green part into the front. And all the green part is, is a comparator that's being uh, canceled by default with this repeater and this slab tower and this torch. So the torch comes up here and is canceling this repeater by default. So I can no longer write to this uh, pixel, obviously. But as soon as I press this button, it unpowers the slab tower and allows our information to be written if we wrote something. So if I wasn't writing anything, it's gonna write a zero. And if I was writing a one to this pixel, it writes a one. And the other cool thing about this is, even if you have this lamp on, you can still clear because we're not writing it yet. Remember, it's being canceled with the comparator. So our clear function works all the time. So now that we have write and read for an individual pixel, let's just stack it. So I stacked it four times to the side 
And what I did is I ORed all of the clear functions together and I ORed all of the write functions together. So now we can have an entire 1D array of information such as this. We can write it to these pixels or we can clear it. And this is also stackable up and down because it's for a display. So we just stacked it four times up and now we have a five by five grid and we can type in pretty much anything we want. Let's just make a tiny smiley face and then we can write it and we see it show up over here. And notice how it stays there. Even if I change all this, our smiley face is constant because it has been written to these pixels. If we clear it, it will always fully clear it no matter what is going on on the input side. So now all we have to do is attach that uh, pixel display thing I showed earlier to the end of this. And now we are completely finished with our dynamic display. So we can basically write whatever we want. We have a write button, we have a clear button, and it will show up nicely on this five by five display of two by two lamp pixels. So let's try it out. Let's just write, um, I don't know, uh, six, I guess. Flip them all on right and we get a six beautiful and if you're wondering right now how is this useful at all it seems like you're just making everything more complicated i mean i am making it more complicated but i promise it's for a reason it's super super useful instead of having to type them all individually by hand over and over again with the original system now all you have to do is store them in a rom and i show this in the rom and ram video so you can store each individual character with a bunch of torches that are all ored in this individual slice. So now we have these custom characters. We can choose anyone we want. Let's just choose a creeper face. We hit write and it writes a creeper face to the screen. We can clear it and we can choose another slice. Let's choose A, write, and now we've got A. And that's pretty much all I've got to say about pixel displays. I've used this design multiple times. Like I said, I've used it for the word processor and I've also used it for the graphing calculator because we needed a way to uh, plot points and basically hold them in memory until you clear your equation. And with a grid of pixels, you can show whatever you want, including numbers, but numbers are actually shown so often that back a long time ago, they kind of developed a standardized way to show numbers in an easier way. Instead of using a grid of pixels, what we use is seven designated segments, and this is called a seven segment display. So each of these segments stays in the exact same spot. It's not a grid of pixels anymore. And instead, what you can do is you can change different combinations of segments to make any number that you want, zero through nine. So how would we go about actually making a seven segment display? Well, with any display, you can either use pistons or lamps. Obviously, I don't like pistons and I always recommend lamps, but I'll just show you the designs for the segments just in case for some reason you still want to make one. Uh, this is a really simple design for any time you have a horizontal segment. And so you can just use a repeater into a block with two dust and that works just fine. And then this is a vertical segment. So we have a repeater into a block, which gets split into a dust as well and that will work for any vertical segment. And this is what they look like if you actually went through and copied them and made an actual seven segment display. So say for example, we wanted to show the number seven, you would simply turn these segments on and you would see a seven on the screen. Here's the way we do it with lamps. And like I said, this is always what I recommend. For the horizontal segments, I like to just do three target blocks and some dust because it's really quick and easy. For the vertical segments, it's a little bit messier. What I usually end up doing is a torch tower like this, and then we have a torch out front that is inverting the torch tower from the bottom. And so you turn it on, which turns this torch off, inverts the whole tower, and now we get this torch powering this, this block powering this, and this torch powering this. So it's a little bit clunky, but I, this is probably just an easy design. So with those designs in mind, we can just copy them into a seven segment device over here, just like we did for the pistons. And now you can draw any number again. So let's just, I don't know, do a five. It would look something like this. And now we get a five on the screen. So that's the basics of a seven segment display. What I wanna do now is make it easier to type in your number zero through nine, because right now the only way to do that is to literally go back there turn on the segments yourself and yeah that's kind of annoying so let's make a circuit that takes in some lamps that are labeled 0 1 2 all the way to 9 and when you flip the number that you want you will get that number on the screen the easiest way to do that is with an encoder we can simply make 10 lines labeled 0 through 9 each one encoding into its specific group of segments and this is how i usually do that so i take the seven segments and i put four lines on the bottom and three lines over them. 
and they kind of look like this. So you have one, two, three, four, and then you have three blocks of space in between them and one, two, three up here. It doesn't matter which line goes to which segment because you can always just change how you're encoding it. All that matters is that each line goes to one unique segment. Then what I like to do is I like to put a additional line on top of it going the other way, a torch tower like this, and another line going the same way directly under it. And if you haven't seen this before, this torch tower acts the exact same as a repeater. It just takes whatever's up here and relays it down here. And then all you have to do is make nine more of them and encode the specific segments. So now I have a line for zero, one, two, three, all the way to nine. And what I've done is I've put torches on the corresponding segments that make up that number on the screen. And so if we turn off the zero one, all of the zero segment torches will turn on and we see a zero uh, show up on the screen. If we depower the five, we see the exact same thing happen with the five, all these torches turn on, which shows a five on the screen. And we can actually simplify this even further. We can put a decoder on top of it. This decoder takes in a four bit binary number. The reason it's four bits is so that it can fit any digit between zero and nine. For example, if we type in four, two, one, 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 that's seven in binary, it will go along this decoder, get decoded into seven, the seven line, as you saw before, gets encoded into its specific torches, and now we have a seven on the screen. So what we've made here is called BCD to seven segment, and what that means is BCD is binary coded decimal. In other words, it's just a four bit binary number that could be anything from zero to nine, and it's going into a seven segment display. So decoding and encoding is a fantastic way to do this. It lets you see exactly what's going on, and I think it's just really clean and simple. Uh, but if you have a lot of free time and you really hate yourself, you can try to make a version without decoding at all. And that's actually what this is. I'm not going to explain how this works at all. It took so long and it's really complicated. It uses a bunch of custom uh, Boolean logic rules that I made for each segment. It just like, don't try to make this, but it paid off because now this is basically what I use all the time. Again, don't use this if you don't know how this guy works. Make this guy first. And then if you really want to steal this guy and use it in your builds. But yeah, I mean, this works the exact same way. You can put in a five and it's actually really fast as well. This is uh, five ticks in its longest case. You could put in an eight, gives you an eight and you can even clear it with this button here. But yeah, like I said, please always use decoding and encoding. It's so much better. I just threw this in here just to, I don't know, to flex and in case you want to use it and steal it from the world download. And that's all I got for you guys. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time. Peace out.